Ooh, ooh, strange gorilla. Hey guys, it's Minty. I've been pondering a while now on what to make as a video, and decided to try my hand at challenge runs. I'm entirely new to challenge runs and never done one before, which led me to try a simple one. Which in reality is probably not all that challenging to be honest, but I gotta start somewhere and why not with a classic. Diablo 2. The rules for the run will be as follows. Hardcore characters only. Players 8 for maximum pain and likelihood of death. Self found, meaning using only what that particular character finds. Throwing weapons only on a barbarian. If you have any suggestions for future challenge runs you would like me to see me try, post them in the comments. If we get quite a few suggestions, we can always add them to a wheel and spin to select at random. Leave it to the gods of RNG to decide my fate. Let's get into the run. Starting a new game requires you to select your character. In this case, it'll be the Barbarian. After selecting your character, you need to select your game modes. We are doing a non-ladder hardcore expansion character as a standard for all our runs. We need to then select a name for our character. I'm quite bad at naming characters to begin with, so I decided to name my characters based on a theme. Perhaps you can guess the theme as we go along through more runs in the future, or perhaps you already have the answer. But I named this character Rhino. It's a iconic villain. You will always start in the rogue camp, greeted by Warwick. Here we set the game difficulty to players 8. As well as have a quick look at the skills we are going to be using for the run. We will mainly focus on throwing mastery and double throw. Along with a few shouts and passive abilities. Making use of double throw, I just figured will up our damage, but it'll also make for... A little bit more entertainment as there's no shields to do a lot of the blocking which means I could literally pop later on in the game for no apparent reason. We are going to make our way over to Akara to receive our first quest which will be to clear the Den of Evil. Now to find the Den of Evil we need to explore the Bloodmoor for the cave entrance. In the Bloodmoor there's just going to be a couple of random mobs. Very easy fallen enemies, some zombies, just to get you accustomed to the combat of the game. During this process, I also attempted to figure out how I'm gonna throw, as I generally could not figure out how to get my characters to throw weapons. I tried javelins, I tried the daggers. Once I got the daggers, I thought, hey, they're throwing daggers, must solve my problems. Sadly, it just made me still stab enemies. I eventually figured out where I went wrong by equipping the miscellaneous action for throwing weapons. It took me a minute, I chose the wrong, uh, wrong one at first as well and then I chose the correct one finally. Now once I finally realized what I was doing and I finally got it right, I headed on over to the Den of Evil. Now once we're in the Den of Evil, the objective is to clear the entire Den of Evil from all monsters. You will know once you're nearing the end is obviously your map's going to be mostly explored but also a quest counter will pop up saying you have 5 left. But once you've cleared the last enemy there will be a shining light coming through the den of evil as well as your character giving you some dialogue. Uh, the dialogue changes from character to character. Barbarian just says the rogues are safe for the moment. Once you completed the den of evil you just head on back to town, speak to Akara, she will give you your quest reward, which is a free skill point. Yeah, yes. And then you can head on over to Kashaya and pick up quest number two, which is to kill Blood Raven. Blood Raven is just a undead archer enemy located in the burial grounds, which is just past the cold plains. You can just Make your way directly there through the cold plains. I decided to kill some enemies just to get a little bit of XP, just to do a little bit of exploration. Once you enter the burial grounds, you get to fight some hungry undead, followed by Blood Raven herself. The only gimmick to her, which makes which could make her a little bit challenging, is that she summons her undead allies over and over again. The fight itself though, you just chase her around, kill her just 
deep throw wailing on her until she eventually goes down and becomes nothing more than a little blue spirit flying into the sky. After you drop Blood Raven, you're gonna pop back to town and chat to Kashaya, which will then unlock your first hireling, well, mercenary <laughs> for the run, which is a archer. Uh, every act has their own mercenaries for hire, depending on the act, they fit the theme quite well. After that, you're gonna speak to Akara, which will give you your third quest, which is to rescue Deckard Kane. In order to rescue Deckard Kane, you will need to reach the Dark Wood beyond the Stony Field for a scroll to unlock the stones in the Stony Field, which opens the portal to Tristram. Whilst in the Stony Field, I suggest you grab the waypoint to make backtracking easier, as well as reveal the location on the map where the stones are to save some time a little later. Stony Field. You can also grab the Moldy Tomb to give you access to your fourth quest. Kill the Countess in the Forgotten Tower. After grabbing the tomb, I go ahead and explore the stony field for the waypoint and the stone's location on the map before making my way to the underground tunnel which leads to the dark woods. Now I had the worst luck when it comes to the stony field as I managed to just, just clip the, the stones on the map but the waypoint was nowhere to be found. I found myself running around in circles and circles and circles just to find the waypoint. For the time I was supposed to be saving, heading over to the dark woods after finding it all, I ended up using now any case just to just to save myself the horrendous time again. Now once you do find the stones, you'll encounter this little bugger called the Rakanishu. The little blue little blue boy, little smurf running up and down that shoots off electricity every time you hit him. Which fortunately enough for us this time around being ranged, it doesn't really do much because we're out of range of the electricity actually hitting us. As opposed to a melee hero taking him on, getting hit, being hit by several sparks at once. Can be quite dev devastating as you can imagine. After I can issue, I ventured on to find the waypoint. It proved to be right there. Once you hit the underground tunnel, or passage rather, in the underground passage itself, there isn't much worth noting. Uh, there's an optional second level you can venture into for the extra loot and experience. I have a desire to skip it and look for the wood entrance straight away. After grabbing the waypoint, I ended up in a huge battle. It felt like a war zone on its own with a bunch of Carvers and their shaman just relentlessly coming and coming and coming. After that, I quickly hopped over to the town, did a quick restock, put all my items, and made my way back to the dark woods. Whilst I'm back in the dark woods, I am looking for the grand tree that I overlooked completely and probably passed right by, if I'm being honest. Killed the elite pack, interacted with the tree, grabbed the scroll which then enables me to unlock the way to Tristram. In order to do this, I'm going to head back to town to Akara, who will then decipher the scroll for you, which will then allow you to get into... it allow you to head back to Stony Field, assuming you got the waypoint very efficiently, and uh, get, to, get to saving the little old man. I head on back to town quick, just to do that. Speak to Akara, clear out my inventory a little bit. I could have waited two minutes and had all these identifications done for free, but I decided, you know what, who cares? I'm just gonna head and do it anyway. From here, you then head back to the stony field. As you can see, the stones have been deciphered. There's no actual way to follow. It's not like a puzzle where you have to do it in the correct order. You only have to do it in the correct order in order to activate it. Outside of that, you can just click on them all until they're all lit up. Like I do here, like a good little barbarian. Once you see lightning flying, Tristram is unlocked. Hop on into Tristram, kill everything in sight. Free Deckard Cane from the cage in the middle of the place. Technically, you are done in Tristram, but I decided... I'm gonna, I have to free Griswold from his accursed existence. 
And naturally, he does not go down as quickly as you would like. He does have uh, a amplified damage curse that he puts on you, which can be rather devastating. So make sure you either have a stocked up of potions or you keep your distance. Just willow him down, grab Wirt's leg, and head on back to town. Once you're in town, you can chat to Deckard Kane, who's very happy to be out of there. Uh, in fact, he is so happy, he lets you identify items for free going forward. Why do you need identifying scrolls? Well, get a new item on the field. Something you want to drastically quickly identify without hopping back to town. Stay there. Otherwise, Bob's uncle. After freeing Deckard Kane, you can chat to Charcy, the blacksmith, who will send you on a quest to retrieve a blacksmith hammer from the barracks, which is just past the Black March. Marsh. Apologies. Once you, in order to get to the Black Marsh, you do need to jump back to the Dark Wood, which is why I expressed grabbing the waypoint. And then go find the entrance to the Black Marsh. Once you're in the Black Marsh, before heading on to the barracks, you can do your fourth quest, which is the side quest for the Forgotten Tower to kill the Countess. You, the Forgotten Tower itself is usually not too bad. Usually quite a nice quick little in and out. Well, so I thought. I unexpectedly found myself in a fight to the death with a pack of archers. For whatever reason, this pack of archers decided to nearly kill me. All in all, they killed my hireling. I, I got very low on potions and I decided, you know what, I'm a barbarian. I don't care. I'm going to give it a go. I just kept swinging my axes and hoping I don't run out of potions. Ultimately though, I turned out to be the champion of this battle. I did, however, shortly after, head on back, restock and grab my hireling. After which I just carried on down the tower cellars, all the way down level 5, which is the, the last level of this entire area. I did muck about a little bit on level 1. I got a little bit of exploration and before I realized what I'm actually doing at the moment. You know, my inner Diablo took over and I started exploring a bit to try and get some loot. Luckily, it didn't take me long to get on back on track. I did see the stairs leading down, but I decided to go the wrong way anyway as I got distracted. Then I went back to level 2 and then very quickly made my way all the way down to level 5. Once you pop into level 5, the quest dialogue pops up and Osh tells you what to do. The Countess herself, the easy enough fight. It's a quick little battle between you and a couple of her minions. She tries to get the upper hand on you, uh, which does not prove too successful. She herself is got she's fire enchanted, which means she explodes on death. But outside of that, it's just a little bit of HP pool. She doesn't do all that much damage, honestly. She she does try and trap you in with fire. But I just proved a little too much for her at the end. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 20, 60, 70 axes, boom. There goes the Countess. Grabs she, the nice thing about the Countess, though, and the reason you would like to do this quest later on, is she's a consistent source of ruins. So if you're falling short on some ruins and you want to farm them, you can just farm her over and over again. And get the ruins you're looking for. Yeah, she guarantees a drop every time. Once you're done with her, you can chat to Deckard Kane. He'll say, well done. From here, you can just mosey on back to the Black Marsh. I naturally forgot to grab the waypoint, so I had to run all the way back to get back to where I was trying to be. After backtracking from the Black Marsh, you head into the Tomoa Highlands, which then hits you into the Monastery Gate, which will then lead to the Outer Cloister to get to the Barracks. On my way through the Monastery Gate, nothing ex not nothing too exciting happened. Very small mobs. Made my way through. Very nice scenery though, very mausoleic, old school theme. Really fits the darkened glow of Diablo. Grab the waypoint if you like, although there's no point in coming back here. If you die, you die. It's hardcore. So, Usually the barracks is to the top of the area. 
and I wasn't really paying attention so I explored it through anyway and then ran all the way back down to the left which happened to be the barracks once you're inside the barracks kill off everything you see on my way to the smithy I ran into another exciting moment with archers yet again they killed off my mercenary again and here I find myself mano a mano with a ton of archers the surprise this time is they're poisoning me and freezing me so I'm extremely slow and my health is draining faster than I'd like but I decided once again and for the content mano a mano let's go very little potions very little mana praying to Aaron Jesus that I get lucky and kill these things before they kill me and with one bone archer and the elite left just me and the elite we're going at it toe to toe one two one two my axes are flying mana's done down to my last single throw single throw last potion gone and boom I survived naturally I popped back to town got all restocked healed got my archer back and it was time for the smithy smithy himself just extra strong nothing fancy not much to mention he's a little blue horn demon you just keep wailing on him and wailing and wailing until he goes down honestly extra strong is only that scary if he can hit you or get close enough so for me throwing you know I can run around get around him just keep wailing on him and there's not much you can do about it honestly once you defeat the smith you run on over to his blacksmith rack there I do not know why he stole Charles's hammer or why she lost it in the barracks but anyway you return it to her she's happy you're happy and all you have left to do is complete act one which is your sixth and final quest to kill Andoril. Now to get to Andoril, you do need to head through the barracks to get to the jail because that makes sense you know barracks jail they go hand in hand once you hit the jail you got level one and two from level two you can hop into the inner cloister inner cloister again <laughs> you grab the waypoint if you want um, or you could just skip it I decided to grab it because I headed back to town quickly to do some restocking before I head into the cathedral once you're in the cathedral there are three layers to get through layers three levels to get through and uh, in order to get to Andoril who is on the fourth level now just making my way through the cathedral pretty pretty straightforward very nice scenery gloop, 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 gloop. drink some well water there I just hit to level one whilst exploring through the catacombs it's just you know general random enemies some elite mobs now and again if you lucky unlucky I don't know what you would call it Suppose lucky for experience and loot unlucky if they kill you maybe question mark but uh, yeah, we make our way through the cathedral while I'm moseying along through the cathedral and not much is happening I just want to if there's any future suggestions you have for some challenge runs like I mentioned in the beginning of the video I'm fairly new to challenge runs I just thought I'd, I'd make a challenge run out of doing something I've never done before and that's use the barbarian with some ranged throwing truth be told I've never even touched the throwing mastery until now and it it seems pretty effective I mean I'm playing on players 8 really dominating the enemies up to this point so far but yeah if you got any suggestions by all means I did accidentally find the catacombs level 2 waypoint on the way down which is lucky and here we are finally at the catacombs level 4 there's a huge room filled with enemies I do suggest clearing them all out unless you really want to be Rambo and set yourself up for death it's a couple dark ones with some shamans and some undead enemies that at least don't respawn the whole time but I do suggest you clear out the room as safely as possible because if you were to die here that would be very saddening as you finally made it just to the end of act one just to get your head blown off by a little a little dark one once you clear the room you are free to sit up and get ready for Andoril herself which I can tell you could be she can be very threatening she does a lot of poison damage which is not great and 
he does a lot of physical damage. Most of the time your mercenary simply doesn't survive, so you have very little in the way of distraction unless you keep hopping to town and keep picking up them up again. Here I cleared out the last of the room in the entranceway, otherwise you're going to still be dealing with annoying enemies and her. Usually by the time you get about to that red lantern slightly up, she comes running. But in this case, for some reason, I had to walk quite a distance to get her attention. I'm not sure if it's because I'm ranged and my physical body didn't go as far as the game expected me to. But once I hit the red carpet, it killed a couple more enemies and then she started coming at me. And it was time to take down the ultimate evil of Act 1. Here on the left in the red corner is me the barbarian weighing at a ridiculous amount of weight with two little throwing axes and a and an archer. And on the blue corner is Andoriel. Two arms, four limbs, some hooves, I don't know. But she is burning my HP as you can see with the poison damage, especially as it continues to stack. Hyaling is out of the picture. I figured I'm gonna man fight this thing. Because I have enough potions left, I should be fine running around, swinging, swinging, swinging. Lo and behold, whilst in this thought process, my HP suddenly went poof. I decided, nope, I'm out of there. Made my way back to town. Quickly healed up because I literally thought this was the end of the run. Was that a cheap cop-out move? You tell me. What I didn't realize at the time until after the fight is... When I came back, I bought the wrong potions. I meant to fill up my belt with health potions, only to realize I filled it up with mana potions. Which I only found out, which I only looked at after the fight. Um, I was so close to getting myself killed for no reason and ending the run due to a bit of an error. But that's, that's, that's how it goes with me. It's not a minty run if it's not botched somehow. But anyways, on returning to Andoril, he goes down. I'm still poisoned. Luckily not for too long. Hireling, start again. Goodbye mercenary, you will be missed. Until I revive you yet again, before heading on up to Act 2. With the death of Andoril, we head on back to town, chat to Kane. He'll say, you are well done, congratulations. The whole town will come up to you and he will tell you to go chat to Warwick. Warwick ends up taking you into Act 2, where the next set of challenges await for our little barbarian and his little throwing hatches. Whilst I round off my inventory here and get ready to head on over to Act 2, I'm trying to take a moment and say I hope you enjoyed my first of hopefully many challenge run videos. I am completely open to suggestions. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it. And on to the next video, I will catch you guys in part two. I hope you have a good one. As always, catch you later. Bye bye.